Welcome to activity 9.1, how can I move energy? So our learning target for today is we're gonna identify conditions that are required for electrical energy to be presented in an electric circuit. And my expectations for you is that you're gonna be able to test the various lab materials to determine if they conduct electricity. Now, if you're watching this video, it probably means that you are absent, so you're not actually gonna be able to test it, but you're gonna be able to watch a video of one of your teachers testing it. So batteries, again, have you ever not used a battery? Have you used a battery so far today? How about with, you know, are you wearing a watch? How about with your phone? How about with your Chromebook, if you're watching this on your Chromebook or an iPad? All these devices use batteries. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna see if we can cr um, create some circuits. Now, let's go over a couple of things before we get started. Remember the Jupiter pendulums? that we used in class. Why did one pendulum swing a few times and then stop, but the other one kept going? Well, it lost energy to its surroundings. So while it was swinging, what type of energy did it have? Well, if you mentioned it had Ke, it had Ge, and remember, it should have a little thermal energy as well. What type did it have when it stopped? Well, if it stopped, it no longer has any Ke or Ge, so it just have a little thermal energy. So one of the things we've been talking about is where does all that Ke go? What happened to it? And we've been talking about how energy will be transferred to the surrounding air. The pendulum and its surrounding air are considered a system. So we can see that energy is conserved. It just goes from one part of the system to another part of the system. So does a pendulum that stop that does not stop have energy? Yeah, betcha. If it's still moving, it still has Ke, still has Ge with a little thermal energy. So why do, why do both pendulums not behave the same way? Is that one of the initial questions you ask? Well, there seems to have different energy sources. So how could it be that they both transfer energy to the surroundings so that one stops but the other one does not? Well, one appears to have another energy source again. So what is that energy source? So how could one regain the energy to keep going? Well, both have batteries inside, but only one of the batteries is working. And I'll be honest with you, only one had a battery, so they both didn't have batteries inside. So we put the battery in one, but not the other. So what kind of energy does the battery have? Well, it has electrical energy, or EE. Now, be careful. If you have to distinguish between the elastic energy and the electrical energy, sometimes I'll have you do this as ELE, electrical energy. So why do some toys need batteries? Well, every toy transfers energy to its surroundings and it will stop unless it regains the energy from an energy source. So some of these toys need batteries and once the battery is gone, they no longer have an energy source to keep going. So why do we have to replace batteries? Well, all batteries eventually run out. So either you have to recharge them or you have to replace the batteries. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you a circuit. Well, Again, if you're doing this lab, it probably means you're absent. So I'm going to show you me with the circuit, and I'm going to test seven different materials. Copper wire, plastic straw, aluminum foil, paper, toothpick, rubber band, and steel nail. And what you need to do is you need to fill out the modified Activity 9.1 sheet. First, you have to make a prediction whether or not each of those things will complete the circuit. Then actually answer yes or no. And then what observations did you have? So you should have the sheet that looks like this. So go ahead, pause the video, and go ahead, take your data. Copper wire. So I'm gonna hook the copper wire up the red. I'm going to hook it up and we'll see if it moves. Okay, so you can see down here that it's moving. That means we've completed a circuit. That was copper wire. Next up, plastic straw. Okay, the motor's not working. It's not running. Next material is aluminum foil. So I'm going to hook the aluminum foil up. So 
we can see that the motor is running. Next up is paper. Paper. The motor is not running. Toothpick. Toothpick. The motor is not running. Next up, rubber band. So it doesn't matter if the rubber band's broken. Rubber band. Oh, the motor is not running. The last item on your sheet is steel nail. Steel nail. Okay, the motor is running. The motor is running. All right, now that you have watched the video of the testing and you have this comp sheet completely filled out, go ahead and turn to page 93 in your book and answer the three observation questions on page 93. Then if you flip the page over to page 94, complete the two conclusion questions. And as always, show your teacher that you did this because you are absent so your teacher doesn't know that you have completed it. And be sure to ask your teacher if you have any questions about this lab. That way, if anything's on a test from the lab, you'll have that opportunity to ask questions before the test or the quiz. Thank you.